Hi there. In this video, I'm going to give you some advice on how to compose the abstract for your psychology lab report. The purpose of an abstract section is to provide a concise summary of all of the different sections of your lab report. So one part of the abstract will deal with the introduction and explain to the reader why your study has been done. One part of your abstract will refer to the methodology section and explain how your study has been done. One part of your abstract will be devoted to the result section and identify the main finding or findings of your study. One part of your abstract will be devoted to the discussion section of your lab report and identify the conclusion of your study and also some of the implications of your study. Although the abstract is the first thing to appear after the title in your lab report, you should really write it last. And the reason for that is that the abstract is supposed to serve as a summary of the contents of your report. And it's quite difficult to summarise something if you haven't actually written the thing you're summarising yet. One other thing you might notice about the example abstract that's been provided in the sample lab report that accompanies these videos is that the author has used subheadings to delineate the different parts of the abstract, i.e. the part of the abstract that deals with the introduction, the part of the abstract that deals with the methodology, and so on and so forth. You don't have to do this, you could just write the abstract as one continuous paragraph. The important thing is that your abstract captures all of the key information from the different sections of your lab report. So let's see how that works in practice. Let's turn our attention first to the introduction part of your abstract. You might want to pause the video at this point to give yourself the chance to read the text and press play when you're ready to continue. The purpose of the introduction part of your abstract is to concisely convey to the reader why you've done your study i.e. the rationale for your study. And we're only talking a few sentences here, absolute maximum. But what these sentences need to achieve is to first of all provide the overall context in which your study exists. And you can see that being illustrated by the couple of sentences in white text on the screen at present. And the second thing the introduction part of your abstract needs to achieve is to indicate to the reader how your study responds to the context you've just identified. And you can see that being achieved here in the orange text. So let's have a look at the methodology part of your abstract now. Once again, you might want to pause the video just to give yourself the time to read the text that appears on screen and press play when you're ready to continue. Now the thing you want to achieve in the methodology section of your abstract is just to give the reader a very concise insight into roughly how your study worked. Now the important thing to note here is you don't want to go into detail at this point. So what often that translates to is you just need to let the reader know about the type of design that's been used in your particular study. In this case it's an observational design. You can see that being alluded to in the first sentence and how the variables of your study work. So in this case, um, you can see that the author is saying that the experimenter just made a decision about whether the person was crossing alone or with an acquaintance, and then whether they elected to cross or wait when the red pedestrian do not cross signal was illuminated. If you were doing an experimental study, you'd probably want to give a little bit of detail about uh, the independent variable for your study, i.e. what you were manipulating, and the dependent variable for your study, i.e. what you were measuring. But that's really the level of detail you want to go into. At this point, it's really important to keep things concise. So let's have a look at the results part of your abstract now. This is a nice straightforward part to do because all you really have to do is briefly and in words summarise the main finding or findings of your study. Now it's okay to indicate what kind of analysis was used but you don't have to formally report the statistics for your study here. It's okay to just point out in words what the main finding or findings of your study were. Again, try and keep things as concise as possible. Finally, let's turn our attention to the discussion part of your abstract. Once again, you might want to pause the video just to give yourself the chance to read the text on screen and then press play when you're ready to continue. The real purpose of the discussion part of your abstract is to give the reader a take-home message with respect to your study. 
And this kind of breaks down into two components. The first thing you want to do is provide a main conclusion based on the finding or findings of your study. And you can see that being achieved in the white text on screen. And the second thing you want to do is to indicate some implications that follow on from the conclusion that you've just put forward. And you can see that being achieved in the orange text that appears on screen. I hope you found this video useful. If so, please do give it a like. If you haven't already, then why not subscribe to my YouTube channel? If you want to know when I post new content, just turn on the notification bell. Thanks very much. Thank you.